Today we are having an educational stream, or slightly educational. The only way to know a guitar is playable is you have to take it on tour, you gotta play it live, you have to do things to it, you have to beat it up. And someone that builds guitars don't really do that. Most of them don't go on tour because their speciality is building guitars. So the only way for me to do it is, you know, beat the shit out of them. I have this, um, the Dario maintenance kit, which is actually pretty cool. I've been using the Dario stuff for a while, so I get a lot of these stuff. Now this this comes with the package, actually. I usually never even do that, but so I don't want to be too crazy. You think, well, Herman doesn't care about these guitars. He just chucked them in. He's not looking after them. He's just scratching the hell out of them. So let's try to avoid this conversation. So this is a floating bridge. It's a full-on floating bridge. I start with the high strings, and you change one by one each time retuning each string. I'm going to put my lap because I enjoy, I prefer putting my lap. What size of strings? We are using 9 to 46. And I'm going to pace you again, my setup, in case you want to use it. <laughs> so I'm going to unlock this string. I'm going to loosen this up. So these are PRS locking, locking tuners. So already this is an improvement over my old guitar, which didn't have locking tuners. It's much easier to have locking tuners. So I'm going to cut the ball here. We have the string winder here. Will this be standard tuning? Yes. Do string by string here. This is the time where you can actually get a cloth and clean the frets up. You know, I'm not going to clean it because I'm going to send this guitar back to PRS for some maintenance. So with the PRS, with locking tuners, what we need to do is we're going to put this string through. There's no more over and under like we were doing earlier on the standard tuner. You don't need to go over and under to make the wind, the winding correct. You don't need to do that anymore because what you're going to do, you're going to lock the string. You're going to going to line up the hole on the tuning pegs, put the string through. We're going to pull it tight on left hand and then we're going to lock it. There's a lock here on the PRS, on the headstock. I'm going to get my pick and I'm going to go and lock it even better. So I've locked the string. Let me show you here on this camera. I've locked the string. I pulled the string straight and then I locked it with this locking tuner. I used the guitar pick to give it a bit more extra tension that my fingers can't do like this. Two driver. Here we go. Now we have a straight string and then we tune it. Oh, so much easier than having to do all this over and under nonsense. So there you go. I tune it to the high E. Let's do the next string. And if you don't know, is basically the springs. You see the springs at the back of the bridge here. The tension of the springs pulling this bridge backwards should be equals to all the strings in perfect tuning, the force of all these strings pulling the bridge forward. So it's a liquid equilibrium of two forces pulling each other. So if you put all the strings away, the bridge will completely collapse backwards and you have to find a way to get all six strings to be pulling in the equilibrium to get this bridge on this guitar in tune. That's, that's some work. If you don't know how to, the little tricks to get it back into perfect balance. Well, I'll tell you quickly how you would do it right now. Maybe you can think about it. Maybe you can work it out, but I'm not going to demonstrate to you. If accidentally someone took all the strings of your guitar on a floating bridge, now your bridge looks like this. It's completely tilting backwards. It's like, oh my God, how do I put this guitar back in tune? It's a nightmare because every time you tune a string, the bridge moves differently and all the other strings go out of tune. So here's a tip, a quick tip of how you solve that problem. So you put something that blocks the bridge from going backwards, tilting, and you pull it in a way that is going to make this bridge absolutely perfect, flat, parallel to your body. How it should be on most guitars. You put a block there, something, something, you will find something. I don't care, cardboard, if it has to be a cardboard. Not perfect, but cardboard will still do. You put it in, and now the bridge is equilibrium. Not equilibrium, it's flat. How it should be when it's in tune. Then, afterwards, you tighten up those springs at the back. Pull that bridge even further. Make sure this bridge does not move, but it's flat against the body and from then on you have more tension on the springs here at the back than the all the strings in tune all at the same time and then put all your strings in tune the strings 
And once you put all the strings perfectly in tune, you pull this block away, your bridge will instantly collapse backwards, putting all your strings out of tune. And you're gonna go, oh my God, are you gonna start tuning the guitar? No, you're not gonna start tuning the guitar here at the headstock. Instead, what you're gonna do, you're gonna put it through the guitar tuner and you're gonna tune the guitar bridge instead. Instead of tuning the strings using the pegs, you're gonna tune the guitar using the bridge. And you're gonna slowly loosen up again the spring at the back until the bridge moves to position where the strings are in tune. Use the low E as the reference because the tolerance is the lowest amount. And once you've tuned it, using the springs here at the back with the body parallel or a 90 degree angle between the, the ground, it's gonna make a, is a 90 degree like this? Because if you do this, the guitar go out of tune. If you do this, the guitar out of tune. You have to tune it like this with the screwdriver at the back, adjust the spring. And once the E is in tune, you most likely all your strings gonna be in tune. And that is done within a few minutes. Try it. Practice a few times. That is your hack to fixing a problem with your floating bridge if you took too many strings out at the same time. There we go. I'm going to put this A string here. And after you put the strings in, we got to stretch the strings. As with a floating bridge, we stretch each string and we tune each string one by one. You don't stretch one and then stretch another one. It's easier, but because we have a floating bridge, we cannot upset the equilibrium between the bridge tension from the springs and the strings pulling the bridge. It's gotta be equal each time. So if we take out one string and lose the tension, we gotta restore that balance. It's like the balance of the force. You gotta restore the balance between the strings and the bridge. Sounds very hippie-ish and Jedi-ish, but it is the art of the floating bridge guitar. So here you go. I press down on this fret position and I pull the strings on every single fret. Not too tight, so I'm gonna break the string, but I give it a nice pull. And you can see, I'm gonna play it to you. Earlier, this guitar was in tune. I have tuned it before I stretched it. Now that I've stretched the strings, you can see how much tuning I've lost. What I'm doing, I'm pulling the strings a little bit. I'm doing, getting the strings to stretch. And this is one of the most important steps of the floating bridge. You have to, stretch the strings, otherwise it's gonna go out of tune the moment you start playing it. So let's have a listen to this and see how out of tune it is, yeah? Actually, it's not that badly. It's only about 10 cents out. Hey, there you go. These strings are good. This is the Dario strings are good. Okay, now we're gonna play the B. This B is perfectly in tune. Out by about maybe two cents. I'm gonna stretch it now. Now listen to it. How much has it stretched? About 25 cents out of tune. So you can imagine if you, all your strings start doing that when you start playing, your bridge is going to fly all over the place and you're going to say, why is my guitar not staying in tune? I just bought a $3,000 guitar or a $1,000 guitar. That is something you have to do. There we go. So I'm going to mute the signal and, to, and just stretch all of them now. Right, we're almost done. Oh, I'm sweating doing this. Wow, wow, here we go. Now let's tune all these strings together. You see, ooh, it's gone to D sharp. So after we've done all this, it's time to abuse the tremolo bar. I do this about 10 times, maybe 20 times. Stretch the strings as much as you can. Push down. Loosen up all the strings. Restretch. Do a few of these. And then I retune it again. And then you lock the bridge, of course. And you do the fine tune. That's what I do anyway. If I'm gonna work on a double locking bridge guitar. I hope you guys found that interesting today. Um, it was actually, I enjoyed showing you this. And actually, it was cool to fix up that other guitar. There you go. We did it. We did it today. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope that was fun and educational at the same time. 
All right, I'll see you later. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Have a good one. Bye.